Yuval Harari's and the World Economic Forum's psychopath plan for humans leading to 666. The globalists, like Yuval Harari, they're just not like us. They despise humanity and seek to do away with it. Harari has said that he thinks within two decades there won't be a homo sapien on the planet. That means not a single person. And personally, they themselves want to stop being human. Why? Because humans are made in the image of God. Humanity will split not into classes. It will split into species, into different species. And the globalists hate God, so they express their hatred of God through a hatred of humanity, even their own. And all this is leading to a number, 666. What we're seeing is an Antichrist agenda designed to launch his empire and the mark of the beast. How that might happen is what we're talking about today. But before we begin to discuss Yuval Harari, the guy who famously said globalist governments and corporations are now ready to genetically hack humans, we need to give a shout out to two volunteer members of Last Day's Overcomers who contributed to this video, Fisherman and Aaron Heinlein. Now, back to the globalists. As Christians, we need to understand that because of this Antichrist agenda, these folks have entirely different plans and desires compared to what the rest of us want. If we assume these folks want what we want, or even what an average unsaved person wants, we're deceived. Based on their actions and what their spokespersons like Harari have said, they're not even normal unsaved people with conscience, ethics, or empathy. They behave much more like psychopaths and sociopaths rather than the everyday person on the street. And given the power that they have accumulated, this is pretty dangerous. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 7, Paul told us that the spirit of lawlessness is already at work, and this will culminate when the lawless one himself is revealed. And this spirit hates humans, so it shouldn't surprise us at all that this antichrist, anti-human agenda is at work. The Bible tells us it's been at work a long time, since back in Paul's day, but there's a big difference. And the difference is that now it is armed with technology to make its plans a reality. Let's say that again. The Antichrist agenda has been around since the days of Paul, but now it's armed with technology which can make its agenda a reality. We witnessed this during the COVID lockdowns and the vicious attempts to enforce digital health passports. The globalist actions at that time betrayed their long-term agenda. I mean, Klaus Schwab was almost giddy, saying that the pandemic offered them a rare opportunity to reset the world. The Great Reset, as he termed it, a chance to bring in a new world order and eliminate human rights. If they were willing to do these kinds of things back during the pandemic, imagine what is coming in the future. Aaron was telling me that in the military they have something called the softening blow. It's a preliminary attack that renders the person unable to react when the real attack comes. The globalists may have used the pandemic as such a softening blow. So when the next event happens... The globalists then can force something similar on people, but without resistance. The next invasion of human rights, so to speak. And maybe they'll even transform people entirely. Maybe even do away with people entirely, because they've said that is their long-term goal. Now, to understand a globalist organization like the World Economic Forum, we can sum them up in just two words. Futurism and godhood. Futurism is an evolutionary type of thinking, an ideological movement which believes all new innovations, social or technological, should replace the previous systems, just for the sake of progress, not because they're better. It's evolution on a social level, and they believe humans are evolving and should evolve physically and biologically also. Rather than believing humans are created in God's image, they think 
but they need to evolve. Evolve into gods. Yep, they want godhood. Case in point, the following presentation from the 2018 World Economic Forum guru, Yuval Harari. I know you guys know who he is, and he is a dangerous man. And he's speaking on the future of humanity as globalists see it. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. Within a century or two, Earth will be dominated by entities that are more different from us than we are different from Neanderthals or from chimpanzees. Because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. These will be the main products of the economy, of the 21st century economy. Not textiles and vehicles and weapons, but bodies and brains and minds. Now, how exactly will the future masters of the planet look like? This will be decided by the people who own the data. Those who control the data control the future, not just of humanity, but the future of life itself. So as you hear Harari talking about transforming people into something else, the real problem with this is, of course, that Jesus came to save humans, not other creatures. Salvation was bought for humans, those in the image of God. If you transform yourself or evolve, as they say, into something more than a human or less than a human, eh, there's no salvation for you, just like there isn't salvation for dogs or cats. This may be the explanation for the mark of the beast as we see it described in the book of Revelation. If this mark is given to those, or if it is something that forms on those who are transformed genetically into something that isn't human anymore, well, then you are eternally damned, just like Revelation tells us. Jesus' blood will no longer save you because you aren't human. Just like Jesus' blood doesn't save a cat or a dog, as we said. Yet this is what the globalists want to do. Because today, data is the most important asset in the world. In ancient times, land was the most important asset. And if too much land became concentrated in too few hands, humanity split into aristocrats and commoners. Then in the modern age, in the last two centuries, machinery replaced land as the most important asset. And if too many of the machines became concentrated in too few hands, humanity split into classes, into capitalists and proletariats. Now data is replacing machinery as the most important asset. And if too much of the data becomes concentrated in too few hands, humanity will split not into classes, it will split into species, into different species. Notice Harari says humans will be split into two species, one a human, the other a superhuman or a god, at least in their minds. And the globalists showed in the pandemic they already desire to split us into categories. Listen to the New Zealand's Prime Minister and World Economic Forum attendee, Jacinda Ardern, bragging about splitting her society into two classes based on whether they had a health passport or not. So you basically said this is going to be like, well, it's almost like uh, you probably don't see it like this, the two different classes of people. If you're vaccinated or if you're unvaccinated, you have all these rights. If you are vaccinated... That is what it is. So, yep. Yep. Can you describe that you were previously hoping not to be able to, not to have to do that, I guess, when we still mm. look like we could maintain elimination across the whole country. I guess that has now changed because... I think it was less, less because necessarily of the elimination determining that and more because we, of course... Uh, maintained and actually we have managed very high vaccination rates generally without the use of certificates but actually what it's become clear to me is that they're not just a tool to drive up vaccines they're a tool for confidence people who have been vaccinated will want to know that they're around other vaccinated people 
Uh, they want to know that they're in a safe environment. It is a way that we can give confidence to those who are going back into hospitality or events. Uh, and so that is something that I think we should offer to people who have been vaccinated, that confidence that we're doing everything we can to keep them safe and that they can come back out and start enjoying those things safely. She says you can only trust or be confident in the one class, and that the other you can't trust. They plan to do this sort of thing to all of humanity, to construct a superhuman race that they think you can trust and eventually eliminate everyone else who doesn't take their upgrade and become that godlike creature in their minds. But who can the unsaved rely on to make choices like this, to do this? Once we have algorithms that can understand me better than I understand myself, they could predict my desires, manipulate my emotions, and even take decisions on my behalf. And if we are not careful, the outcome might be the rise of digital dictatorships. In the 20th century, democracy generally outperformed dictatorship because democracy was better at processing data and making decisions. We are used to thinking about democracy and dictatorship in ethical or political terms. But actually, these are two different methods to process information. Democracy processes information in a distributed way. It distributes the information and the power to make decisions between many institutions and individuals. Dictatorship, on the other hand, concentrates all the information and power in one place. Now, given the technological conditions of the 20th century, distributed data processing worked better than centralized data processing, which is one of the main reasons why democracy outperformed dictatorship and why, for example, the US economy outperformed the Soviet economy. But this is true only under the unique technological conditions of the 20th century. In the 21st century, new technological revolutions, especially AI and machine learning, might swing the pendulum in the opposite direction. They might make centralized data processing far more efficient than distributed data processing. And if democracy cannot adapt to these new conditions, then humans will come to live under the rule of digital dictatorships. And already at present, we are seeing the formation of more and more sophisticated surveillance regimes throughout the world, not just by authoritarian regimes, but also by democratic governments. The US, for example, is building a global surveillance system, while my home country of Israel is trying to build a total surveillance regime in the West Bank. While Harari plays lip service to democracy versus digital dictatorship, he goes on to assert that centralization may become the de facto system of governance. He seems to not mind that at all. He seems to think it could be a good thing. He says this because that's always been the World Economic Forum's intent. The globalists argue that governments can't be trusted. Notice that word again. And that someone needs to step in and regulate the data. But who would do this, Harari asks. He already knows the answer. The UN, a global edifice that the World Economic Forum, those kind of billionaire people, control. He has consistently said it should be the governing body that takes control of AI and all data regulation. So, when we listen to him here, Harari is playing coy. He already knows that the people who will step in to control data are people just like him. And then... Those people will hack the human genome and make a new species and try to eliminate those made in the image of God, like you and me. 
This is the essence of what the Bible describes in the book of Revelation as well, in terms of the Antichrist, who's the ultimate dictator, the mark of the beast, the division into two classes of people, and the number 666. In a previous video on this channel, Dr. Doug Hamp informed us that 666 happens to be the atomic weight of two pairs of bases in DNA. So 666 could be a clue that it is a DNA-based change that's somehow related to the mark of the beast. But we are made in the image of God. But in Revelation, we also learn about the image of the beast. The false prophet has the earth dwellers make an image to this beast. Is it possible? This isn't just some statue, but rather a genome, a non-human upgrade to our DNA, so to speak. But control of data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. And if indeed we succeed in hacking and engineering life, this will be not just the greatest revolution in the history of humanity. This will be the greatest revolution in biology since the very beginning of life, four billion years ago. For four billion years, nothing fundamental changed in the basic rules of the game of life. All of life, for four billion years, dinosaurs, amoebas, tomatoes, humans, all of life was subject to the laws of natural selection and to the laws of organic biochemistry. But this is now about to change. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. And at the same time, science may enable life, after being confined to, for four billion years to the limited realm of organic compounds, science may ena enable life to break out into the inorganic realm. And what does the Bible say happens to those who don't worship this evolution, this image of the beast? First, they say they aren't worthy of food or working. The right to buy and sell is taken away from those who are still just regular old humans. They take away the resources and give them to the new, quote, superhumans. Then eventually, he causes that as many as would not worship the image of the beast are to be killed. They just eliminate the lower class of being. Because, as Jacinda Ardern says, they can't be trusted. The globalist, Luciferian thought process is the same in both instances, the pandemic and later in the image of the beast. Don't trust that lower class that doesn't comply with us. So how does Revelation describe what's going to happen? First, power will condense into a one world government led by the merchants and the UN. This is the government of the Great Reset. The Bible calls this Mystery Babylon which Revelation 17, 18 tells us rules over the kings of the earth. But then, as could be expected, power continues to condense into the hands of a single individual, the beast or Antichrist. As Revelation 17, 16 tells us, the beast will burn Mystery Babylon with fire. It is then that the mark and the image are of the beast. So that is the point where all this stuff goes global when the flesh of mankind is being transformed into something else. And what does Jesus say about this time period? Quote, And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. In other words, but there would be no human flesh left at all. That's Matthew 24, 22. Lots of those. In the image of the beast, but almost no 
regular human flesh left. People either convert or they kill them. So this is Harari and the World Economic Forum's globalist plan for humanity. Right out of the Bible. Be upgraded or die. Which makes what is taking place in this world right now very understandable. The next big step for the nations of the world is to surrender their national sovereignty. And nothing says create a one world government faster than a nuclear attack somewhere in the world. That is why NATO and the USA want a nuclear exchange. Yes, they want it. So click right here to keep watching and discover that what we're seeing right now in Eastern Europe and in Ukraine is leading to exactly that. It's all planned. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.